What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 36 of our Liverpool FC playthrough here on Football Manager 2016. Hopefully you guys are good. Today we have a live com against Arsenal but I left last episode which if you missed it definitely go check out it was a longer one but I left it with kind of a should we say a cliffhanger? I don't know if it's really a cliffhanger. It was a dilemma that I was facing. And the dilemma was, did I spend £96 million to bring in Dybala? Now, you might be looking at this team here looking for him. The truth is, we didn't end up signing him. I decided the money was just a little bit too silly. I didn't even get any, kind of any alternatives. As you can see here, we still have £50 million in the transfer budget and £500,000 wage budget. But I just simply could, I could, I couldn't find a striker who I felt was going to be, kind of, I guess, capable of kind of filling the void that I wanted them to fill. I looked at players like Benzema, I even looked at Carlos Tevez as kind of a, maybe a season-long option, even though he's 33. The bottom line was, there just wasn't a striker out there for me to go out and sign. So, we didn't sign anyone uh, in the striker front. I did make a few signings, the first of which was Tin Jevaj, or Jevai, I guess, I think it's Jevai, I'm not sure, you can guys can let me know, answers on a postcard. Um, we got on the Croat, he took a decent little right back, just a little bit of coverage more than anything, but we got him in on loan for a fairly small fee from Barcelona, um, and he can also play centre-back, which is kind of useful. He was the only signing we brought in immediately, there is one who I've made, and that was a Bosman signing, and that was Alex Tejera from Shakhtar. This guy, he's a pretty talented centre mid. As you can see here, my uh, scout didn't think he was a worthwhile signing, but we're bringing him in on a free. He's only on about £50,000 a week as a rotation option, and he's just a really good rotation player to have. He's a leading Premier League player. He's an intelligent player, consistent, enjoys big matches, both footed. Uh, he did get a work permit. His only real kind of, I guess, sticking point is the fact that he can't speak English and his adaptability isn't the greatest, but he's a pretty good, well-rounded midfielder. He can also play up front, or at least I'm going to be training him to play up front. He's very close to being capable of playing there. And uh, he'll just be a very, very useful player to have come on off the bench and really make an impact for us, I think. So that was the new signing, unfortunately. With it being a Bosman signing where we've kind of offered him a pre-contract, he won't be joining us until the end of the year. Anyway, looking at the rest of the side, there weren't any more sales that happened at the end of the window. Cataldi, really the big one, going out for £40 million. Um, we've played a few games since the last episode, which of course was a double header against Chelsea and Man City. As you can see here, we drew in the FA Cup first round against Stoke. We did beat them in the replay 2-0. You can see here Tillemans and Gertz getting the goals for us. And in the league, we played one game and it was a 3-1 win against um, Norwich, who were bottom of the league. Alex Neal was sacked following this game. Good to see Lacazette get to and Daniel Sturridge score. It's kind of nice to see both those guys playing up front alongside each other. Unfortunately for us, Daniel Sturridge went and got injured again. He got a damaged foot. He's only out for four to six days, but unfortunately for us, that is going to mean he misses this Arsenal game, which is a real, real shame. So look at our fixtures coming up. We have Arsenal, who of course we're doing today. We then have Dortmund, which I'm probably going to do as kind of one episode, but just live comp both matches and then play the matches in between. So you've got that to look forward to in the Champions League first round. Of course, we qualified out of our group as first seeds. So that's pretty nice. Dortmund have been made favourites uh, regardless, which is a little bit of a shame. It'd be nice to be kind of backed by the bookies, but maybe we can use that to our advantage. So yeah, uh, looking at the league table, as I mentioned, we've only played the one game. You can see here, Arsenal actually slipped up, which really kind of was a bit of a let-off for us, because we've been disappointing of late. But you can see here, they lost 2-1 against Southampton. Southampton doing us a real favour there. So, I hope we can capitalise on that. A win today would see us move seven points clear of Arsenal. A defeat would see Arsenal close the gap to just one point, which not too comfortable if you ask me. You can see, looking at the rest of the table, we have a seven-point cushion over Man City, but we also have this game in hand that we're playing today. Similar situation with Chelsea, and really, um, we've got a nice little cushion onto the team in fifth. Of course, our expectation for this season was changed in January, January to winning the league. I'm a little bit annoyed that I couldn't make us like kind of a real landmark signing to help us kind of achieve that with the extra money we got for saying we'd finish top. But, uh, you know, we're just going to deal with that. We're going to move on from that. And I'm hoping that in today's game, we can take one step closer to winning the league. You can see after this game, there'll be 12 games left. So we are getting towards the kind of, I guess, crunch time of the season. Of course, last episode, we did lose against Man City and draw against Chelsea. Fortunately, we had built up a little bit of a cushion. So this game here marks the kind of last game of kind of a, a tough run, I guess you could say. Looking at it here, um, 
we're going to be taking on Southampton, Hull, Derby, Swansea, Huddersfield in the league. So there's a few winnable games there. We then have United and Tottenham. Tottenham probably the game I'm going to live come following the Dortmund games. And as we have the FA Cup sixth round come up, not going to do that game away against Manchester United just because we've got bigger fish to fry, I guess, in other competitions that really have my priorities. So anyway, let's get into today's game. As I mentioned, Sturridge is injured. I believe he's the only injury he is um, that we've got to contend with. So we've got a pretty decent squad at our disposal. Looking at the team here, nothing too kind of crazy going on, I guess you could say. We're playing Firmino, Lacazette and Goethe as kind of a front three. Midfield, we're going to go with Henderson, Thiago, Maia and Coutinho. And our back five is just the standard kind of usual suspects, I guess, in Mignolet, uh, Alberto Moreno, Sacco, Zuma and Klein. So anyway, we'll submit our team here. As you can see, United also taken on Crystal Palace. Uh, looking at the past meetings, Arsenal have been pretty dominant against us in recent years. Of course, they won the league last year. They're probably the title favourites. I think the bookies had us down to finish fourth this year. So really, where we are now is pretty darn impressive. A win here would be absolutely fantastic, but it's not going to be easy. Arsenal with one of the best defences in the league. They've also, like us, only lost four games. Um, a draw wouldn't be the worst result in the world. And, um, you know, I wouldn't kind of lose sleep over it. But at the same time, I kind of look at these kind of games as a chance for us to do well. I've, I've accidentally let my uh, accidentally clicked a team talk there that I didn't want to click, which is a little bit annoying. So we'll try and save it here with the individual team talks, which have gone pretty well, all things considering. And, yeah, we'll get into today's game. So you're probably wondering, Jack, why didn't you sign Diabala? The truth is that £90 million was just too much. Given the fact we sell Cotoldi, we've got some nice money in the bank. If we really need to invest it, next season is always an option. That money isn't going to go anywhere. We might need it as well because Meza Ozil's just scored after two minutes. Arsenal really been one of our bogey teams. I feel like if we go 2-0 down here, I have to change the system. I feel like the way Arsenal play with their wide men probably counteracts our system a little bit. I mean... I saw early on, particularly in this save, a lot of people perhaps criticised the formation that we're using the 4-3-1-2 because they said it, it got us exploited out wide. And I kind of agreed with them to begin with. I kind of switched things around, told players to be more flexible, told our wider centre mids to move into the channels. And they've kind of helped a lot more defensively as a result of those changes. But I still think against very, very good teams out wide, the likes of Arsenal, it probably has its kind of own weaknesses that just naturally come with the system and no matter how well organised we are no matter how well the fullbacks do it's always going to be a problem for us you can see 15 minutes in here possession fairly 50-50 but Arsenal creating all the opportunities and it's a little bit worrying to see um, us already have um, you know so many bookings so I think we're going to change to one of our plan B's the question is which do I want to change to and I think the one we're going to change to is this one here. It's the 4 3, three. This is, a, I think, a debut for this system. It's not too dissimilar to our actual system. It's more so just a change in shape. Uh, I'm going to take off Exploit the Middle, though. But you can see here, it's not a massive change, really. It's just a bit of a rejig. Um, I think we're going to play Lacazette and Goethe this way around. And I said, do I want Lacazette cutting in on his right foot? I probably do. Um... I'm going to change those around. Goethe, he's going to be playing as an inside forward, of course. He is right-footed too, I do believe he is. So that's not going to suit him quite as well, but I feel like that's the way to go. So we'll go with this. I guess the other option is to move... Hmm. The other option is to play Lacazette as the striker and Firmino as kind of the inside forward, which is kind of tempting. I think I'm going to do that. That's what Firmino and Lacazette around. But it's still a pretty nice system that kind of suits the players we have. We do need to make a change here because at the moment Arsenal looking pretty dominant. Um, and this is going to be a debut for this system. So this might fall flat on its face or it might prove to be genius. Uh, we'll have to see as Arsenal have a set-piece chance. Imagine if we conceded just one minute after the tactical change. Wouldn't be great. But yeah, I've still not experimented too much tactically in this game. I've kind of had this one kind of 4-3-1-2 system and run away with it. But it does feel like, you know, this game, um, the, t the tactically, it's a little bit different to FM15. But at the same time, a lot of the core kind of same things still work, which I guess is to be expected. Football doesn't exactly change overnight. Um, but I've yet to kind of truly experiment with a load of tactical systems. It tends to get to a case, I guess, by six months into F Football Manager. I'll kind of have 
a system for every single formation that I know works, you know, from various saves, various tactics that I just have saved, you know, I'll have my go to four two three one with certain roles, maybe I'll have a few different variations of it. Gertz has just given away a penalty. That's always good. We're going to have to try and save this here. I believe in you, Mignolet. Who is taking this penalty for them? It's Morata. Mignolet, I believe, he's gone the right way. He couldn't reach it. Arsenal double their lead. And it doesn't really matter what tactical changes you make when you concede a penalty. Funnily enough, it, you know, it generally it's a little bit irrelevant. Unfortunately for us, we've conceded a second goal against Arsenal. One of our kind of real rivals in this save. They've been a team who, well, if you can remember earlier on in the season, we were beating them 3-0, we looked dominant, and then somehow it all went horrifically wrong. And, well, we, we, as you guys will know if you watched the episode, we lost 5-3 in the second half. So it's not like we can't score against them. It's certainly not like they're unbeatable. Um, but they, they're they definitely one of the strongest teams in England at the moment on this save, and they're certainly kind of our main title rival here. But anyway, I've slated the players at half-time. I want us to really step up in the second half. We've got a chance at Coutinho, set-piece. Lacazette, headers it, in off the post. That is a delightful goal, and it puts us right back in this game. It's 2-1. Coutinho with a really deep free kick, crosses it in. Was it Lacazette, leaping header, hits the post, goes in. A beautiful goal there. And we have a chance. We have a lifeline here. That is the ideal start to the second half. Now, we really need the players to crack on from this. Looking at it here, still not been kind of at the races really today. But we have a goal. We have a lifeline. Hopefully, that can galvanise the players in the second half to really put in a, you know, a hard-working shift and try and get us a win here. I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of yellow cards we have to Kurt Zuma and Sacco and Maya. You know, kind of our three most defensive players. Uh, really, because of the way Maya sits back and the full backs will bomb on ahead. Um, I'm going to change something here. I'm actually going to... Why did that retick? I definitely unticked that. But I'm going to tell the players to exploit the flanks now. I want us to push slightly higher. And I want us to play at a faster pace. I'm also going to test to be more expressive. With the amount of kind of um, quite technically gifted players we have, giving them that freedom, I guess, to roam is kind of nice and uh, can work in our favour. Lacazette cutting inside almost... An incredible goal there for Alexander Lacazette. Cuts inside onto his right foot, shaping up for the shot, uh, for the shots at the 18-yard box. Unfortunately, he could only put it wide. Now we need to defend Ramsey. Well cut. I thought Zuma had given away a penalty then when he slid through the back. He hasn't though. And now we attack. Mario Goetze out wide on the right. Options inside. Can he get the ball across? He can. Henderson saved, but Lacazette there with the rebound, and we have turned things around in this second half. Lacazette with two goals. 70 minutes in, it's 1-1. Hopefully we can now use this to go on the attack once more. The tactical changes have kind of worked for us. Looking at the stats, right back in this game, performing well. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to try and make some tactical changes. I think now we're yet to use any subs. Maya already booked. I don't really want to risk him. So I'm going to bring on Richedley Bazaar to play defence in mid for us. Gertz is struggling with fitness. I think we're going to bring on Imbolo. I think we're going to do that. Brillambolo coming on at right mid. Firmino also not at the best game. I'm going to make a triple sub here. I'm going to bring on Gabriel Barbosa too. So we're bringing on two really talented wide attacking midfielders in Bazaar, uh, not in Bazaar, sorry, in Barbosa and in, uh, of course, Embolo. These guys are two strikers who have a ton of potential. They're really good players. They've just not really shown it this year. I mean, given Barbosa's injuries, he's not had a chance, but this is his chance now. To hopefully do something, although we do need to stay switched on and stay solid in the defence. Arsenal bring the ball forward here. Cazorla, edge of the box. Ozil, Bellerin, fantastic save by Mignolet there. Bellerin, probably not the player you'd want that chance to fall to, but Mignolet with a fantastic save. And hopefully we can now deal with this corner and then, you know, look to rebuild and reshape from the back. Coutinho picks it up, tries to thread through Lacazette. Pass just not quite there. 15 minutes left on the clock. Arsenal back on the attack, though. Ever since that second goal went in for us, they've been looking fairly decent. Although Lacazette, fantastic turn. He's on his own, really. There are some options coming up ahead. But uh, that's Gabriel with the tackle. And this is end-to-end -end stuff here. It's now Walcott looking to break away. Fantastic run by him. It's almost an insane goal. It is an insane goal. I think he got... A third shot there, it was a ping pong between the keeper, the post and World Cup, but he finds the net somehow, it's disappointing. Theo World Cup cutting inside, right on the byline, saved once, hits the defender, hits the keeper, and it just somehow squeezes it at the net post. That is demoralising to see, we've been the better team in this second half really, we've got two goals, but now we have to go out there and find one more. 
and it's time uh, to kind of really unleash the cavalry, I guess, and really go on the attack. We have to we have to go for it here. So we're going to go for um, what might look like a bit of a strange system <laughs> if you were to look at it, but we've got to you know we've got to chase this game at this point. So we're going to throw some men forward. We're going to look to just attack as best we can. We've got what nine minutes to try and get a goal. We've used all our subs. We kind of gambled a little bit, but. Um, we're going to throw more men forward. I'm going to move Barboza and Mbolo into slightly narrower positions in the hope they can maybe do something for us here. But this has been such a close game. It would be so disappointing to lose it 3-2. 45 seconds left. If there's going to be a goal for us, it's going to have to be an incredibly late equaliser. I don't believe, I'm going to be honest, the belief has gone out of me. And this is going to be so disappointing if we do lose this 3-2. A game that we looked almost dead and buried out of. We fought back, however, just wasn't enough on the day. And it's going to be a second defeat in the league against Arsenal this year. You know, we really needed to beat them in one of these games, in all honesty, to really win the league. We're still ahead of them by one point, and we have played a lot of our difficult games. But that doesn't make it any less disappointing. It was so close yet so far for us. 3-2 is going to be the final score. Arsenal probably deserved their win. But given the kind of circumstances, I guess, around it, it doesn't make it any less disappointing for us. We still have that one-point cushion. We have got some easier games coming up, but nevertheless, it's still bitterly, bitterly disappointing. Unfortunately, of course, Goethe giving away a penalty that did result in one of our goals that we conceded. So looking at our form here, it's been a rough patch of form, it's fair to say. We've lost... How many? We've we've lost three of our last five league games and only won one of them, and that was against the team who were bottom. We have got some easier games coming up. I hope we can bounce back from. I'm now looking at this block of Manchester United, Tottenham, and Everton as kind of a really important set of games for us. If you look at the actual games we've got coming up, it's a fairly kind run, with the exception of the, those kind of games. We've already played Arsenal. We've already played Man City. We've already played Chelsea. Um, that's I think we've got Southampton yet to play too. So that, that could be a fairly big game. In fact, that is our next game. So that's going to be a pretty big game for us. But anyway, that is going to wrap up this episode from me, guys. Unfortunately, the tactical changes we made just left us a little bit exposed at the back, really chasing the game. And when it got to 2-2, perhaps got a tad bit greedy. But we'll live and we'll learn. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, as always, please do smash the like button. It does greatly help me out. Let me know what you made of that live com. If you've got any inspirational quotes, I ask for these far too often when I feel like I've had a disappointing result. But if you've got any inspirational quotes to cheer me up, leave them down in the comments. And uh, other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.